LeBron James is a force of nature. Never in the history of pro sports has anyone had bigger expectations thrust onto them and yet somehow wasn't hyped enough. When LeBron was historically given the cover of Sports Illustrated while still in high school, they called him the chosen one and they were spot on. LeBron James has had no shortage of spectacular jaw-dropping moments, but today we're going to take you through some of the more under the radar though equally amazing moments from King James' career. Of course, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more videos if you're new. It's no secret that LeBron James has been in the NBA for a long time, but when you go back and look at it, it's a lot longer than you probably realized. By the time Drake dropped his first studio album in June of 2010, LeBron had already scored 15,251 career regular season points. That's already more than the career totals of Kyle Lowry, Paul George, Blake Griffin, Kevin Love, and even Giannis Antetokounmpo. LeBron's NBA career is older than the iPhone. In fact, there have been 34 different versions released since he started playing professional basketball. He's also been on TV as long as shows like NCIS, The Bachelorette, and even outlasted the entire run of The Ellen DeGeneres Show. If you really want to feel old, when LeBron was first drafted, some of the world's biggest companies were trading for literal pennies. The average price of Apple stock was just 28 cents. Meanwhile, Amazon and Microsoft were only $1.89 and $16.45 respectively. LeBron's been in the league so long that he somehow managed to overlap not just the primes of his contemporaries, but multiple superstars drafted after him. These include players like Dwight Howard, Russell Westbrook, Carmelo Anthony, Dwayne Wade, Derrick Rose, Blake Griffin, and Rajon Rondo. But for those of you who watched him in high school, none of this is a big surprise. While at St. Vincent St. Mary, LeBron mania ran wild, but not everyone was buying into the hype, namely a fellow top 20 player and future NBA journeyman, Trevor Ariza. Ariza was the 18th best player in the country, but because he played out west, he didn't cross paths with LeBron much outside of one game during their senior year. Maybe it was because Ariza's comments were in the middle of back-to-back -back California State Championships, but when he showed up to play LeBron in the Fighting Irish, he brazenly and foolishly called out James. Ariza referred to LBJ as overhyped, while Ariza's uncle took it a step further, saying, I don't know why LeBron James gets all the publicity. My nephew Trevor Ariza is better than he is. It didn't take long for the Ariza family to be proven dead wrong when the two shared a court on February 3rd, 2003 at the primetime shootout in Trent, New Jersey. After getting out to a quick 6-0 lead, Ariza hit a big dunk and taunted LeBron. Like magic, LeBron flipped a switch. James scored 18 points in the first quarter, and then by the half, he was up to 35. James finished the game with 52 points and would have outscored the Comets by himself had it not been for a garbage time three. The Fighting Irish won in a 78-52 blowout. James went 21 for 34, including six threes, while Ariza ended the game with just 12 points. A defeated Ariza had no choice but to give the man his props saying, there was nothing we could do. While Ariza may have not believed the hype, there was one man who knew this kid had something special, and that man is Michael Jordan. Back in 2001, Michael was planning to make a comeback to the NBA, so to help him get back in game shape, he held secret scrimmages with some of the biggest names in the NBA. Guys like Paul Pierce, Penny Hardaway, Jamal Crawford, Tim Hardaway, Jawan Howard, Ron Artest, Antoine Walker, and a 16-year-old LeBron James. LeBron didn't expect to see much game time since these guys were some of the top players in the NBA. But after a few hours, some of them got tired. LBJ got his chance to play against his idol. Speaking about this day on Uninterrupted, Braun and company recounted a story of MJ hitting a game winner over Antoine Walker and MJ saying, that's why they pay me $33 million to do this. James must have left a good impression on Jordan because this wasn't the last time he'd score an invite to an MJ event. A few years later, while he was a rookie in the league, James was invited to an MJ camp in Santa Barbara, where this time the two played pickup on the same team. Shocking absolutely no one, MJ and Braun didn't lose a single game. LeBron's high school career was as storybook as it gets. He finished with a nearly perfect 101-6 record, three state titles, three consecutive Mr. Ohio awards, and two consecutive Gatorade National Player of the Years. But did you know he actually suffered a broken wrist injury? During an AAU basketball game in his junior year, he broke his wrist and had to miss six to eight weeks. While it wasn't a devastating injury in the grand scheme of things, it did force him to stop playing football, which he unsurprisingly was also amazing at. 
As a sophomore wide receiver, he earned first team All-State honors and was even being recruited by big D1 programs like Notre Dame. In his two seasons of high school football, James had 103 catches for 2,065 yards and 23 touchdowns. A lot of professional athletes and scouts think that LeBron could have played in the NFL. And honestly, we wouldn't put anything past LeBron. But then again, it's hard to argue with his chosen career path. While LeBron trains tirelessly to keep his body in prime physical shape, that's only part of what makes him so special. Genetics only gets you so far in this league. To be truly great, there's a mental component. What's your basketball IQ? How do you prepare for games? Based on what his opponents have had to say, in this department, LeBron James is truly untouchable. While on JJ Reddick's podcast, The Old Man in the Three, DeMar DeRozan shared an unbelievable story about just how prepared James was for a game. DeRozan said, I remember it was a play we was trying to run and one of our teammates forgot to play and Braun told him to play. Like, it was some crazy shit. We calling a play and the Raptors teammate was like, what? And Braun told him what our play was. Former Cavs GM David Griffin backed up DeRozan's story while on the Bill Simmons podcast saying, I was in the gym when I watched him on the floor against Toronto tell Patrick Patterson where he was supposed to go on the play they had called out of a timeout late in the fourth quarter. He was like, no, Pat, you're supposed to stand over there and set a pin down for DeMar DeRozan over here. As if knowing his opponent's plays wasn't impressive enough, James apparently has everyone's basketball reference numbers on lock too. According to former teammates Amon Shumpert and Quinn Cook, James could tell you anything you needed to know about any opponent no matter how important they were. Cook told Sports Illustrated, he knows everybody. It could be the last guy on the bench on the team, but he knows he's left-handed, he's a shooter, don't go under him, he's a driver, stuff like that. He pays attention to the game, he watches the game, and he studies. It's his incredible work ethic that commands respect, even from people you might consider his rivals. Draymond Green and Braun might be cool nowadays, they're business partners after all, but it wasn't too long ago that Green was taking cheap shots at Braun during an NBA Finals game. But before those famous Warriors-Cavs battles, Green was just a late second round pick trying to make it in the league. And as it turns out, a big LeBron fan? Green recently shared something that no one would have seen coming. He used to rock LeBron's kicks. Speaking about an incident with Grant Williams this postseason, Green compared it to something that happened with him and James saying, when I was wearing LeBron James sneakers in my first one, two, three years and playing against him, he didn't throw it in my face like, dude, you got on my sneakers because it's just not something you do. But once he started going at me and it got chippy, then you just go wherever you gotta go. Unfortunately, Green didn't get any more specific than that, but I would have loved to know what James, who was smack dab in the middle of his prime, would have said to this then nobody chirping at him. What LeBron James is doing right now is historic. Only eight players in NBA history have played more seasons than LeBron James, but none of them have maintained the high level of play as he has. While Vince Carter's number one for seasons played at 22 because James has had so much postseason success, he's actually already passed Vinsanity in career games 1,632 to 1,629. James is currently 7th all-time in games played, but is likely to slide into 3rd all-time if he can play 55 games this year, something he's done every year but once in his astonishing 19-year career. LeBron has logged 63,175 minutes of playing time to date, and he doesn't look to be slowing down much. Last season, at 37 years old, he was in the MVP conversation, averaging 30.3 points, 8.2 rebounds, and 6.2 assists per game. No matter what side you fall on in the GOAT debate, I think we can all agree that we're never going to see anything like LeBron James again. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like and of course subscribe for more videos if you're new.